Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Night Vision. I'm Samantha. And I'm Erin. As we begin the third and final trimester of 2023 to 2024 school year, we here at Night Vision are excited for what events this new trimester will bring. Coming up first, the AVPA Music Senior Recital, which is happening on Monday, March 18th from 7 to 9 p.m. Here in the week is the annual chocolate competition, which will be held during the school day on Thursday, March 21st. In preparation for this event, Akaha upperclassmen have been working tirelessly to construct beautiful and delicious chocolate cakes. Tune in next week to watch a Night Visions interview with one of the lucky winners. Also next Thursday is the Senior Fashion Show, which is the largest senior fundraiser each year. Any students who sign up will be getting their hair and makeup done at the Parisian Beauty Academy before walking the runway in a personal design, cultural outfit, or clothing donated by one of the event's sponsors. Today is the last day to buy student and teacher tickets, so make sure to grab yourself a seat. One of our seniors, Isabel Lee, was named the Records Student Athlete of the Week just last month. Isabel is ranked 14th in New Jersey for swimming, and she's earned a spot at Columbia University to continue her athletic career this fall. Please join me in welcoming Isabel to Night Vision. Welcome, Izzy. Thank you so much for doing this interview with us. Of course. So, first of all, how, what initially started your interest in swimming and how did you get involved in competitive swimming? Yeah, so I actually have a pool at home and my parents didn't want me to drown, so they decided to start putting me in swim lessons and so I started swimming at the Wyckoff YMCA and then ever since then like they were like, oh, you should join the Sharks, which is the competitive swim team there, and I did and I tried out for it and I made it, so yeah, and I've been swimming since then. In the competitive swim team. Great, can you share with us some highlights of your swimming career so far? So recently, high school swim-wise, there's like high school and club swim, but for high school swim, I was able to win the uh, in, at the Bergen Media Champions, the 50 and 100 free, and then I also got the Bergen County records for both of those events, and then I've actually won the 50 free as well for the past two years. And then um, for club swimming-wise, uh, I made I recently made junior national times, which seem like worse than national times, but they're actually faster, and so that's been a goal of mine since I was around like 10 to get those new national times, so I'm really happy. And speaking of goals, are there any goals that you have set for yourself as you continue on with your swimming career? So actually in college, um, training with Columbia, I hope to get the um, Olympic trial time for the 50 free, so I'm like a second away. And as mentioned earlier, you're going to Columbia for swimming. So as you make the step into college swimming, uh, what are you most excited about as you take on this new chapter in your life? Yeah, so, uh, college swimming is a little bit, bit different than club swim because of the like team aspect. So I'm really excited to make new friends and get to know my teammates. And then also, I mean, I'm given the opportunity to use a lot more equipment that's like more professional. So I'm definitely gonna use it to my advantage and get my hope to get my goal. But, yeah. Sounds great. Thank you so much for this interview. Yeah. Three of BCA's very own research students have been selected as finalists to advance to the Reg Regeron International Science of Engineering Fair being held in sunny Los Angeles, California this May. One of these winners will be featured on our show next week. Congrats to these finalists and to everyone who participated in the Research Expo. One of the highlights last year was when students from Aarhus Cathedral School in Denmark paid BCA a visit. This coming Thursday, students from the same school will be joining us once again, and they'll be shadowing various students throughout the school day. This is a great opportunity to learn about other countries and cultures around the world, so let's be sure to give them a warm BCA welcome. Earlier this week, eight BCA sophomores won awards in the C-SPAN Student Cam Documentary Competition. Three of these submissions were awarded honorable mentions, and two visual students have won second place in the Eastern Division for their video, Footprint by Fabric. Here with us is Heyman Moon and Melanie Shim to tell us more. Hi, Heyman and Melanie. Thank you so much for doing this interview. Of course. First of all, congratulations. Your documentary, F Footprint by Fabric, won second place at this year's C-SPAN student cam uh, competition. Let's take a clip. Let's take a look at the clip of the documentary. As demands for more clothes grew, mass production soon followed. Retailers began adopting strategies to distribute these poorly made garments to the world. In recent years, the production scale has only grown bigger. In 2015, a study found that companies were manufacturing double the amount of clothes they produced in 2000. Simultaneously, the average consumer was buying 60% more clothes than 15 years ago, while fabric quality continued to worsen. During the pandemic, the fast fashion industry escalated to unprecedented heights, drawing customers from malls and stores to the convenient sphere of e-commerce. 
Over the past couple of years, Shein has slowly dominated the fast fashion market. They showed a notable increase in sales in 2022 that led them to officially take over 50% of the entire industry later that same year. The fast fashion giant can attribute these growing profits to their online marketing tactics. It's easy, it's accessible, it's quick. So for consumers that have just become used to this, almost, you know, instantaneous shipping, free shipping, all of those things, it's really easy to get a hold of. So they don't see any reason uh, to, to change that. In a year, 100 billion new garments are created, along with 17 million tons of clothing being thrown away by Americans. Textile waste refers to the material that is left over and thrown away after the garment manufacturing process. When textiles are discarded, around 66% are sent to landfills where they can take centuries to decompose. It looks great. How did the two of you initially get involved in this competition? So we first entered this competition as a part of Mr. Lang's design production class and essentially it's an annual tradition as well as core class project that sophomores in the Visual Academy do in their first semester. So um, we started out I think in October or September till January when working on this project and I don't know how many people know this but C-SPAN actually has a notorious reputation in the Visual Academy for being one of the most just stressful and like um, long-term projects that we'll ever do in our high school careers. So we were definitely pretty nervous when we first started out, but it came out like this. So. <laughs> um, and can you guys tell us a bit about your documentary and how you guys landed on the topic of fast fashion? Yeah, so our video delves into the topic of fast fashion. Uh, and we go into the environmental and uh, ethical issues, but we also talk about how we can mitigate its impact. So I think uh, it's so important to discuss this issue because it's so relevant, especially to the younger generation. And I think our main goal was just to spread awareness about like, how important our clothing choices really are. And what was your favorite part when working on this documentary? So for me, my favorite part was conducti conducting the interviews uh, with a diverse group of people and how they sort of tackled this issue in various ways. So for example, we uh, interviewed government officials and they talked about uh, legislative efforts. We also talked to uh, organizations and how they're trying to spread awareness and yeah, that was fun. Also another fun part about the project itself was when we were creating and planning our creative direction because Melanie and I, we both had a similar vision for our documentary as something that was not only informative but also told a story. So as many people might know, people remember things better when packaged through a story. So we thought that by including these creative elements in our video, we would be able to convey the message better. And I think eventually that became a real driving point in our final documentary. Okay, and in contrast to the previous question, what do you guys consider to be the most challenging part? Well, this is a difficult question because the entire process itself was a challenge for us, but if I were to pinpoint specific ones, I think I would say first time management and also um, creating a general outline for our entire documentary because it takes a lot of time and effort to plan out each of the parts, each of the sequences in our video. And so given that this was our first doc documentary and we only had a couple of months to make it, it was pretty stressful for us at first because I personally remember thinking in the beginning that we didn't have enough time to do each of the parts of the project. And we really struggled with trying to adjust to the fast pace because um, we were given strict deadlines for each of the parts of a video, so um, it took us a lot of time to adjust, actually, but I think that was part of the learning process. Yeah, and even though these deadlines were stressful, they're not supposed to like be annoying. It's just there to like keep us organized and keep up the pace of uh, the project. And also, through this project, we actually learned the importance of organizing and naming our files. Even though we had to learn it the hard way, I think this was like an important lesson that we learned through the entire process. 
And finally, is there any advice that you guys would like to share with those who may be interested in possibly entering C-SPAN student camp in the future? Yeah, so when you're picking your C-SPAN topic, I think uh, while it's beneficial to uh, discuss something that you already know or that you're passionate about, that doesn't necessarily mean that you should shy away from topics that you're not too familiar with. So I think you should just like approach this project uh, and have like a willingness to learn new things and yeah that was yeah and along with this mindset I think really what we would like to tell people is just to enjoy the process because making a documentary is not meant to be excruciating despite what everyone else might say and the more you enjoy and have fun while creating the video the better your final outcome will be once again thank you guys so much for doing this interview congratulations thank you, thank you. In our night vision, your go-to television show for BCA News, highlights, and more. I'm Erin. And I'm Samantha. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we hope to see you next Friday here on Night Vision.